what, according to your worldview, which includes Shermer's last law, what could God possibly do to show that he exists? And if there's nothing, there's nothing that he can do to show that he exists, is this method really designed to get to the truth of the matter? There's something that wouldn't happen otherwise, uh, I suppose. Over and over again in this debate, it's been, um, hey, if God exists, then, you know, where's the evidence and how, why can't we find the evidence? And, uh, hey, we, we, should, we should be skeptical and, and demand evidence and so on. But when we ask, what evidence could God possibly give in any possible world that would count as evidence for the existence of God? The answer is something that, would ha that wouldn't happen otherwise. But something that wouldn't happen otherwise, according to Shermer's last law, could be explained by aliens. So once again, we're left with a methodology that can't possibly investigate this matter. This is the Shroud of Turin, believed to be the burial cloth of Jesus. It contains the blood stains and the marks of the wounds of Jesus. Scientists confirmed it is not forged. The image was imprinted on the cloth by strong radiation of light. Scientists who dated the shroud confirm that it is commensurate with the time of Jesus' death. In 1933, Jesus appeared to St. Faustina in this form and asked her to paint an image of what she saw. Jesus provided her with an artist whom she instructed. Jesus spoke to her in those visions and she documented everything he told her. When the conservation work was approaching the end, the image was already located in the chapel, and no one observed it except the sisters, of course, for the reasons of safety. The sisters arrived. Ursula Grzegorczy came as well. She saw the image with a restored face, and as she was standing, looking completely silent, she said that this face looked just like Christ from the Holy Shroud of Turin. For the first time, this similarity was noticed by Father Serafin Michalenko, who showed me the effect of comparing both images, which was done at his request in the 1990s. The results of my anthropological studies of the two faces from both images show a complete convergence with such characteristic facial points as the middle part of the eyebrows, the base of the nose, the cheekbones, jaws, the wings of the nose, the beginning of the upper and lower lip, and chin. It's worth analyzing the same details by observing the images in three dimensions. It is a face model created by Professor Mignaro in 2002, based on the measurements of the Shroud of Turin and the veil from Oviedo. The veil of Oviedo is the object that covered the face of Jesus when the body was still hanging on the cross and this veil remained there on the face until the body was placed on the shroud. Then the veil was removed and the body was covered with the shroud. Traces of blood on the shroud and veil give us full information of how the face of Jesus looked like. I put all three images on each other, and it turned out that the eight points determining the most characteristic features of the face perfectly matched. I also think that it is worth seeing it from a wider perspective, when we do not limit ourselves to such a fragment of the Shroud of Turin. If we put Kazimierowski's painting here, just bringing it to the proportions you can see on the Shroud of Turin, Of course, nowadays such a proportional mapping of the image from the shroud would not be a problem. It would be enough to project the image from the shroud onto the canvas and the effect would have been obtained mechanically. However, as we know, Kazimierowski did not use such a technique. His painting, therefore, was made, one could say, in an intuitive way. He only followed the instructions of Faustina, who told him how she had seen Jesus. 
If you wanted to apply the probability calculus, you would have to do at least a thousand face images to finally get proportions such as the ones on the shroud. This means that we cannot talk about accidental action here. I desire to unite myself with human souls. My great delight is to unite myself with souls. Know, my daughter, that when I come to a human heart in Holy Communion, my hands are full of all kinds of graces which I want to give to the soul. But souls do not even pay any attention to me. They leave me to myself and busy themselves with other things. Oh, how sad I am that souls do not recognize love. They treat me as a dead object. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. The words with which I entreated God are these. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us.